Uyghur Nation? I'm your co-host Lala Mamet, and I'm your co-host Nurbedi Kelpin. UUI has officially started its very first podcast, Chit Chat and Chai, and for our first episode, we are joined with a very special guest, Lala. Anyways, no last name, just Lala. Oh my, she's kind of mysterious. Yeah, she's trying to be cool or whatever. <laughs> so, as some of you may know, UUI is a youth organization for. Uyghurs across the United States and hopefully in the future the nation. Um, and we wanted to kind of make a podcast to bridge the divide between Uyghurs, talk about culture, gossip a little, um, the works. Lala, Nurbeni, and I all kind of reside in this Northern Virginia area. Majority of the Uyghur diaspora, the Uyghur diaspora, um, resides here. And, you know, we've kind of grown up here. We've grown up together. Um, and so I think this will be a great way to kick it off. Mm -hmm. And for some background information, I was born here in New York. I'm a New Yorker. She was born in Vatan. How old were you when you came from back home? I was 10. And then how old are you now? 21. Let's 20, not. 21? You're oh. not supposed to say that to a woman. That's the last question 21. that you asked. I'm turning 22. 21? That's what I'm so old. And Zalala was born in back I home too. I am Urumtulak. Urumtulak. It's a joke. I came here when I was two. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, um, so how is it like been growing up in a community with so many wheelers it's been great <laughs> um i think it's been nice kind of to like grow up with some because i moved around a lot when i was younger i moved around a lot when i was younger so it was like very isolating sometimes like i spent like five six years in nebraska which i'm sure you know <laughs> oh my goodness corn huskers <laughs> go corn huskers yeah, I mean, I'm glad because I'm just glad to have like this close circle of friends that I've been like known since childhood. Like, I feel like I've known both of you for a pretty long time. Yeah, I think it's we've had like all different experiences. Like, I know in the better you like went back to that then a lot. Yeah, I went back like five times before like things got kind of bad down, up th down there, up there, <laughs> <laughs> around there um, in East Turkestan. But, yeah. but you came when you were 10? Yes, I came when I was 10. So how was, like, what's different? Like, what do you think? Like, in terms of schooling, I know you were, like, a wild child back in the then. Oh, okay. she had a wild days, what, from what I hear, but... Mm. But that was, like, in elementary school, so not fully wild. Um, but... I don't know, you sounded like a delinquent when you were telling me stories about it. It was nice. Um, it was hard, though, because... Like, the first 10 years of my life was spent in, like, a totally different culture, and I had to move here and adapt. The first year or two was fine, because it was new. Mm -hmm. um, but afterwards, I think I had this, like, um, cultural, like, setback. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to figure out how to mix the two and have, like, a balance. I realized that like people here are more closer with their like direct family is what I felt at least mm. compared to like people in Urumqi. I feel so. like also like here it's like so much more clicky. Like everybody has their own little group. Oh, for real, like, for sure. You know, all the families have their own little friends. I think that's how Lala and I became friends actually, because she actually did not like me when I was younger. Ooh, <laughs> well, because Tea. of the age difference. I feel like what age difference? Time... We still have that same age difference no, now. No, at that time you're like transitioning. To puberty or whatever <laughs> but yeah i think like lala and i like kind of like grew closer because we like always saw each other but also i feel like because like Uyghurs are so like clicky they can also be like super judgmental oh bro yeah why are you smiling like that <laughs> what you guys said the tea is coming it's because i'm also very judgmental girl we that's know. why i'm smiling Girl, we know. But oh my god, Lala is so fat and ugly. I know. Oh my god, I heard. She's that she so like... she's staying. <laughs> I mean, we're all girls. We're all like young girls, and you know, besides Lala, none of us have really like turned twenty yet. <laughs> none of us. Just the two the of two you. Of us. There's a huge community. <laughs> <Tell here. Aubrey. laughs> Yeah, I'm talking about the people here. There's two okay. youthful ones and then one old hat. <laughs> I feel like 
girls in the Weaver community just have it different. I completely agree on that. <laughs> If we're just talking about we were specifically, I feel like from a young age, like, you know, our moms, like, teach us stuff. They're like, okay, like, make sure you keep the house clean. They teach us how to, like, cook and stuff and how, like, if we have guests, like, how we're supposed to properly greet them and serve them in the house and stuff. But I don't know. I feel like that kind of relates to, like, like the shame culture because like mm -hmm. girls are put towards doing this stuff so exactly. it's like not an embarrassment to the family like you have to go crash no, for crash real. with the niman like pour the chai mm -hmm. like make sure to be washing the dishes in the kitchen while the niman are in the, like the guest room mm -hmm. like help your mom in the kitchen while they're there you know bring out the food for them and like mm -hmm. you know clean up after people but i feel like it's so different um for like guys and i feel like that's just surrounding like the yeah. sense of like shame and like preserving the honor like for example like after like guests right like it's always the girls cleaning up after everyone and like mm -hmm. it's a good thing to do but like where are the guys at like, i feel it's like not it just should be mutual thing. you know i mean obviously i'm not saying that girls should just sit at their house and do nothing i just feel like it shouldn't be like only expected of us to do everything that's related to the house you know what i mean and like even when having kids you know what i mean it's like it shouldn't be only the mother's responsibility to do a lot of things like it's like a mutual, I mean, most of the time, it's like a mutual agreement between the husband and the wife, right? And we're the ones that go through the nine-month process I mean, of giving birth. it's definitely a mutual thing. Yeah, so like, I don't know why we should be the only ones doing everything, you know what I'm saying? It should be 50-50. I think it's just like expectations placed on women. I think it should be 60-40. But yeah, because okay. I gave birth. <laughs> oh yeah, or maybe I like, like did my part. Maybe seventy yeah. thirty actually. Yeah. I don't know, bro. Ninety ten. <laughs> <laughs> I think like even now, like this pressure that was on us since we were little has made girls to be like much like dare I even say it much like stronger than we were men. Like mm -hmm. if you look at the majority of people like fighting for the we were cause right now especially in our age group i don't know how it's like in diff other countries or maybe even other regions of the u.s but especially in northern virginia in the east coast like the majority of people like fighting and advocating for the uber cause are like girls or like women and you don't really see a lot of like young guys kind of step up and do how stuff. dare you say that <laughs> <laughs> in the comments this, this is just a radical feminism <laughs> It's like all the guys up in the comments, you don't know what I've been doing. <laughs> what would you know? I but know. it's so true. It's like, it's always the girls at the protests handing out them flyers. It's always the girls showing up. It's always like the girls like organizing things like this. For um, real. We're just willing to take initiative. Yeah. And I think that has something to do with like how girls are raised in the labor community, you know? Um... What do you guys think? I feel like I've just been on a rant. I'm just pent up. I mean, I totally agree on that. It's just the expectations are definitely different. And I feel like in our community, like, on s the most things, like, if a girl does something, it's not acceptable. But if then a guy does it, it doesn't matter. You I know, feel like we don't want to go there. If no, no let's there, we'll go be there. sitting here for They're hours. They're forgiven. Go there. No, literally. Like they'll do anything and they're like, it's okay, old ball MS more like I'm speaking in Urucha, no, but they're like, oh they're like old ball MS like Yash Wakta Dash Tabul the like they always find excuses for guys, you know what I'm saying? But if a girl does it, no matter where she is in her life, no matter what she's going through, it's like she's like shamed by the community. And I just find that really unacceptable. Right? Especially I think it's crazy. literally like they don't even think about what that person may be going through or like the backstory you know it's like not even the even smallest story no it's even like, the smallest things are just blown out of proportion when it comes to like a woman doing it and i'm just like yeah like i, I feel like this is something like you could touch on like for example like we were guys once they reach a certain age they're just like let go and they can do whatever they want whenever they want right mm -hmm. like they're like oh you're an adult you're a guy like you should have your freedom you should go out and explore but with girls like we're kept like really sheltered yes do I want to get into it? Yeah, let's because, get into it. <clears throat> um, I grew up in a very, very strict household. It still is very strict. I'm 21, but I live with my parents, and I have a curfew. I can't go out whenever. 
Um, it has gotten a lot better, but compared to, I would say, guys in our community, there is that um, unfairness. Yeah. Because I feel like, like I'm, I'm not going to name names. I won't name Let's drop. not go there. Let's, Let's not, not go, go there. there. <laughs> you know, there's like things that Uyghur guys do that's like very well known throughout the community. Like, oh, that person definitely does this. They do that. They do this. And like, I feel like it's known for people our age though, not the... No, the people know. Older people know too because word spreads like fire in the For Uyghur real. Community. Literally the next, within the next hour. Like everybody will know. But the thing is because like, oh, like they're guys, you know, like it's fine. Like, oh, well, 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 I started stuttering because I was so nervous. <laughs> she got she's really passionate so about this topic as you guys can see. <laughs> um yeah, so but then like it's a girl does a small thing. Like let's say, like obviously like Uyghurs are Muslim, um, but even in Islam, it's like everybody has their own personal choices. And mm-hmm. then like, you know, you're the one who's like facing God in the end. Um but like in the Uyghur culture, there's like this sense of like shame you know like if you go to an uber event especially here like you can wear like you'll wear something like a little bit too short um or a little bit too open right let's say or even tight something tighter yeah, yeah. and like you'll come as a girl you'll be told like oh you like your people are gonna think you're a whore like people are think you're gonna think this like or there's another thing in the Uyghur community where it's like you're, you're a young girl you need to protect yourself mm-hmm. from the men which is like t- so crazy to me because like we're out here being we're like teenage girls and then we're told um, teenage girls but like even you Wait, we're, we're adults young now. adults <laughs> but we're still teenagers but we're like young adults and we're being told to watch how we dress because of like the predatory behaviors of older older men like, and this is america that's so me- weird and i was literally told like lala was literally here when i was told this do you remember that one time when that one girl told me like like the the younger they are the more men like it like i do you remember, remember? Oh, why did i talk about that oh no, my I remember god her saying that. i don't know i just feel like cuz i remember when i went back home especially in the countryside more it's like really common for younger girls to be married off to older men mm-hmm. and it's like they'll literally have really big age differences like 20 like, years older how it's, does that play into now though like, i don't know the thing is i just feel like some people just carry on those ideas when they move here they just bring it with them and that people should still follow it or whatever maybe it's just because of the environment they grew up in but I don't know. I just personally feel like if it's not your family, if it's not your own kid, then mind your own business. We can handle our own problems ourselves, like, and we have our parents, like, to let us know if, like, what we're doing is inappropriate for them, so we can handle it ourselves. I just don't see why other people feel such a big need to get involved in others' business, especially people that are, like, way younger than them. I don't know. This yeah. seems very I feel like that's part of the shame culture because exactly. you're like trying to scope the youth into like what you believe is right but like at the same time that's like I feel like it like kind of only applies to girls because like there's so many guys who do so many different things here like especially in this area um on all kinds of different things but like girls if they get remotely close like they're kind of like shunned from the Uyghur community almost mm-hmm. like like, you have a bad name, and then everyone is told to kind of stay away from you. Um, yeah. And then you are kind of just naturally shunned away from the Uyghur community. Do we have any of those people? Or, like, what people? Like, that, that I can been, just cut it out. Yeah, that have been shunned, like, off the top of your head? Yeah. Yes, there is. Like, I, guys or girls? Girls. Oh, uh, yeah, I just yeah. talk about guys because that I know to do that. I, there are, like, girls that I know, because... And I mean, I'm not saying what they do and what they're doing is right. I'm just saying, like, their standard is different. There's this girl, um, and we were putting together a slideshow for my grandfather's funeral. Um, Mm -hmm. He recently passed away. Um, And there was this picture of a girl in one of the photos, like, in one of family photos that we had. And apparently, like, her reputation is just so bad, for God knows what reason, that like literally like we took the effort to edit her out of the entire picture like literally erase her from the entire picture who did that 
me. She's good at editing pictures. If you guys ever need any any guys, help with that, I was lying. Call it her was Lala. <laughs> it was you. <laughs> what? She's so surprised. I already knew this, and I didn't know that you were the one who edited it out. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I'm kind of losing it, guys. I'm, like, I'm scared to look to the side. I love my side profile. No, me too. I've been, like, my double chin. My double chin. I feel like I can... You. I'm, like, scared. I'm, like, trying to look into the camera while no, I'm No, I've been doing this this whole time. Okay. <laughs> Going back to what we said earlier um, about the shame culture, whatever, um, and just people making comments like that to us about how girls are in the community or whatever, have you guys ever had someone like Abashla say or talk about how you won't be able to find a good guy or get married into a good family if you act a certain way? I mean, I've heard, like, like my mom like says that to me to, like, to me. my mom says that to me to, like, tell me what not to do. No, but I've, I've like, never that's, had someone say that to me. I, I just, I don't know, like... I haven't had someone directly say that to me either, but I've just been in some situations where people say that about other girls. They're like, we like, mm-hmm. like they say stuff like that, and I'm like, bro, that's not how it works. I want to know what's being said behind my back. No, genuinely, I don't know, and I was just like, I don't know, and they're like no like in-laws will like no one will want you as like their daughter-in-law and stuff and they just say stuff did you like say that. something like this a while ago about what cut cut this part out okay don't so, say names or anything no no names i'm not gonna cut this um so there's this girl that we know her dad did something and then the lady heard of this and was like oh i'm not gonna try to be in-laws with this this okay, family. I know who you're. I I like know the situation you're talking about, but I can't remember who it was. Don't act like you don't know. <laughs> Wait, I actually don't know. Did you just drop the crumb <laughs> in my freaking? Tea? I didn't. I put it here. I did not touch that thing, and it's in my tea. No, you you took the crumb from my pants, and then I put it over here. Why? Why did you put it? Why does it matter? No, it's, it's not your hand. It's the fact that it's in my tea and I can see it now. I, I don't want to drink it. It's anymore. just oh like gum. It's edible. It's, it's, a it's literally. Oh my God, I almost said homophobe. <laughs> I meant. I meant she's a germaphobe, not Guys, homophobe. Please stop. No, I'm not a homophobe. That's I don't know what you're talking about. Why are you smiling as he's? <laughs> no, because it was a mistake. That's not what I meant. Cut, cut, cut. Oh. How can I be homophobic? How can I be homophobic? <laughs> My bitch is gay. Oh. Okay, you do it then. No, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> You're literally in the spotlight. Bitch has not said a word. I said so much. You guys know everything about me, where I live, how old I am, what my opinions are on these things. Or but, topics. Okay, but anyways, we were saying, like, in the situation we're talking about, I can't remember who it was. I feel like... If I say names, you better cut this I'll out. I'll bleep it. <laughs> what is this awkward silence? Oh! There is a situation going on in the Uyghur community. Um, is it good? Not, not the situation. <laughs> not, yeah, it's so yummy. <laughs> Stop moving around on the table. It's going to pick it up on the fucking mic. Sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it alone. What's up, Uyghur Nation? <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Um, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, there's this situation <laughs> in the Uyghur community. Um, there's situation a, as in, like, not huge, just a tiny little. It's like a. It's a little, it's a little, little thing. Under the rug. <laughs> Kind of a thing. Under the gilam. <laughs> um, and so there's just this dad. Oh, maybe we should have been. Who cheated the, on no. the boy. There's this person. Who been cheating. There's this person. Let's. People will know. <laughs> Leave it alone. But something oh. happened. And cheating happened. That's what it is. Ooh. And that's pretty common here too, guys. Like this this guy's daughter um is kind of at the age where their parents are looking for a husband for her. And apparently what I heard is that like the a potential candidate's mom. So 
a guy that she was interested in. Mm-hmm. Or she interested in? I mean, she was definitely interested in. <laughs> I felt like it was more of the family. Mm-hmm. Okay, family. anyways, there was an interest in the guy. And then the guy's mom heard about the dad. It was like, ain't no way I'm ever marrying my kid to her. And so that's kind of relating to what we're talking about. This is the only situation that I've heard of where someone was like, I don't want to marry it all. Because it was a girl. But you know how like in the community, they're also like kids take after their parents and stuff? Well, that's not the thing. You think so? No, that's well, I've heard that a lot actually. Like, people I mean, are, if like, your parents like that's why they're afraid of like marrying them off to those. But people. it's like just girls though. It's like like I'm never, I'm sure I don't know. I if mean, that was the dude's family, I don't think the girl's family would be like. I don't think they would have cared. They wouldn't yeah. have cared. That's but like thing. that's just everything with Uyghur guys. Like everything like they do is just like brushed off. Like like for, for Uyghur girls speak like uh, an eligible wife or Sorry. whatever. To be like considered like a good wife material like there's so many standards that you have to meet like you have to be well educated you have to have manners you know you have to speak good uyurche and like with the guys like where is that it's just that there's so there's just not a lot of guys i think that's but i feel like at this point though like it did used to be like that like a lot but i feel like now at this point like, parents are happy if their Uyghur son just finds a Uyghur girl, like, at this point in time. Because, like, a lot of people have been marrying non-Uyghurs and stuff. So I feel like... Is that a problem? I'm not saying it's a problem. I think it's a problem. We'll get into this in a bit. But no, like, I think it's a problem. Let me finish my <laughs> comment. What I'm trying to say is now I've seen a lot of situations where parents are just like, okay, he found a Uyghur girl, that's it. Like, they don't care about anything else. Oh, okay. okay, did you know that if a girl, unmarried girl, leaves the chai done, chai neck, like this, they're not gonna get married? Like, it's the same? <gasps> because you're not pouring it, so you have to put it like this. So, if anyone's chai is finished, I have to go and pour it. So, when are you gonna get married? Oh. <laughs> um, back to what I was saying, I think it's a problem. Okay, first of all, before we. I don't know. What don't you know? I think it's a problem. No, I don't know. It's a problem. Listen. Don't call me like... What's the problem? <laughs> okay. I think it's a problem that like Uyghurs are marrying out of like... Oh. Marrying out of the culture. Not that that like that itself is bad, but when it comes to Uyghurs, I think like the situation is just different. Like mm-hmm. we are facing a genocide, not only physically, but culturally as well. Like if you look at like China's census, like... Our population, they keep reporting our population smaller and smaller. Like, we used to, like, we were experts say that we were a population of 20, over 20 million people. But on US, like, on Chinese censuses, like, mm-hmm. when they report populations and stuff like that, we used to be at 13 million, now we're 12, now we're 11, and now we're at 10 million. Like, it's and, probably lower than that, to be honest. Yeah, I doubt the No, it's higher, true. so it's higher, but people. yeah, mm-hmm. it's higher, and they've been lowering it on purpose, so mm-hmm. it looks like we were never like much of a big population in the first place. Um, and I think, like, and there's 4 million, like, people dying in concentration camps right now in Vet Like They're probably, most of them are probably already dead, too. Yeah, are like our population is like rapidly decreasing and so is our culture like because we have this disconnect with that that yes i can read and write Uyghur, but it's very basic level like it takes time for me to like write out a sentence mm-hmm. or read a sentence and like thinking about the age that we're at like that's just a sign yeah i just feel like our parents didn't leave but then for things to like end up this way you know i feel like one of the reason why they left is obviously because of the tensions, but I feel like since there's just so much going on, it is important that we continue this. And honestly, I've heard it a lot. I don't know if you guys have, but people who marry, I mean, the majority, obviously there are those that I'm sure are in happily into, like in relationships with other people, but I've been hearing that a lot of people who get married to non uyghurs get divorced, like not too long after because of the cultural differences. I mean, I think that's, like, all, like, maybe, like, that applies to, like, all interracial marriages. Yeah. I just, and I'm not saying, like, people who do that aren't, like, unhappy. Obviously. And I'm sure, yeah. Obviously, I'm sure there are like, people they that picked, are happy. They, yeah, they picked each other out. Like, they're obviously compatible in different ways. It's just, like, in my opinion, I feel like, I mean, it's already a statistic that once, like, one ethnicity moves to another cult, like, another country, like, after this many number of generations, they are completely assimilated. I mean, and yeah. I think, like, 
that's a very dangerous thing for Uyghurs because we can't afford to do that. Like we are not like at a point in history, at a point in the world where we can even risk doing that because then we'll be completely exterminated. Yeah, but at the same time, I feel like in order to like have Uyghurs marry Uyghurs, it's not okay to just think that every Uyghur person is an okay. Like, yeah, yeah, obviously. Because I don't know. I feel like like a lot of parents are like, as long as you marry an Uyghur person, like that's okay. Like they don't consider the other aspects about that person, to be honest. And I think that plays into how like guys have different set of standards. No, exactly. They're just. I feel like some like parents will be like, as long as you marry an Uyghur, it's okay. But like even if the guy has like. Some aspects about him that wouldn't make him a good husband or a good significant other, it like it's still okay just because they're Uyghur. And the same goes for girls too. Like, like just like not all girls will be genuinely like a good person just because they're Uyghur, you know. But I feel like now, like in some circumstances for marriage, they don't care about that as long as Uyghurs marry Uyghurs. And I don't think that that part is acceptable. Like obviously, yes, Uyghurs marrying Uyghurs is important, but at the same time, we shouldn't just let everything go because that person is Uyghur. Yeah, if that makes sense. And I also feel like it's kind of different when you're still keeping your culture. I guess, like I know there's like couples in the Uyghur community who, you know, married somebody who's not Uyghur but are trying really hard to maintain like their Uyghur identity. And, and their, their significant kids. other works hard to yeah. do that as well because yeah. there are literally some people. There will be some situations, like it, especially in our generation, where an Uyghur marries an Uyghur. But then both of them, since they didn't really、um, grow up, or since they don't presently think that really like teaching their kids Uyghurja or like teaching them about the culture is important, then their kids will still grow up like any typical Americanized child, and they might like be completely whitewashed to be honest.、Mm-hmm. But then there can be like there can be like Uyghur who marries outside of their race, but then that significant other is also thinking that it's important. To teach their kids about it, and then their child might end up being more cultured and more Uyghur than like two Uyghur people who get married in Hawaii. But I feel like that. <laughs> so it depends on、well. the person, and it depends on parenting as well. Because as we mentioned earlier, there are a lot of people in our generation who can't speak Uyghur yet, even though both of their parents flu- can. Don't attend protests. Are just not involved in general, re- like regardless of what's going on back home. So I just feel like it's really important to emphasize. Parenting and teaching your kids like the language, teaching them about culture from a young age, so that way they grow up、um, being passionate about it, and then carrying that on to future generations as well. Um, what you guys are saying is totally true, but I feel like we don't have a say in who, who fall in love with. No. <laughs> There is、okay. who. <laughs> we so fall for me, in my I opinion, think I think it's、say. fine. If you marry outside the culture、mm-hmm. or ethnicity or religion, let me take that back.、Um, but like, why do you think so, though? Because I know we gave a lot about about our opinions on like why we think it's not okay. So like, why don't you talk a little bit about why? I mean, it? it's it's life. You can't just keep it into like. If we were living in a society where there were no other ethnicity, it's just you. I feel like it would be fine, but like, especially we go to school, we work with people that are different race and ethnicity. So like, you can't really control like I'm only going to meet with this specific ethnicity and sorry and <laughs> marry this particular group of people. So I feel like. I mean, I mean, I totally get like you can't control attraction. Like、mm. I've definitely had a, my fair share of crushes、mm. on people who are not Uyghur,、um, but like I feel like you can control it to some extent beyond that point. It's kind of in your control to continue meeting with them or pursue exactly. something with them until feelings grow more. It's definitely I feel like something that we can keep under our control,、um, and also. I don't know. For me personally, I realized that I truly like having that cultural connection because there was a time. Obviously, like I grew up saying I'm only gonna marry Uyghur, but then I do admit there was a time period where I was like, oh, maybe it's okay if I marry outside of the race. Like if I marry someone else that's not Uyghur, I did have a time period like that. But then, I like I realized eventually again that 
it's important for me to marry someone that's Uyghur because I personally like having the cultural connection and I think it's something that's important to me. And obviously, if I were to somehow have kids in the future, I would want to raise them with that mindset as well. So Yeah, and like also when you like marry like other Uyghur people, like you have their parents. Mm-hmm. That can also enforce culture. Unless they're not here. Well, in most cases, mm-hmm. like in our generation, mm-hmm. like we are very um, privileged for most of us to have our parents here. So mm-hmm. we have that kind of like sense of enforcement. Like, for example, in the future, I hope that like, you know, I can bring my kids to my parents' house and have them grow mm-hmm. up with grandparents and have that experience that I wasn't able to grow up with. And I'm very grateful for that. Um, but I think like that's kind of what we were saying. Like to some extent, there is control. And like, obviously, we live in America. You know, we are all to a degree um, assimilated. You know, we're speaking English on this podcast right now. We eat American foods. We've grown up in the American education system. I like Asian food. <laughs> Don't <laughs> touch me. Get down. Get down. <laughs> Plus one, Nurpeli. <laughs> la Lan's La Lan. <laughs> Nurpeli. <laughs> um, anyways, as I was saying, Yang. Um, obviously, we're all assimilated or whatever. So it's no, sure, no. But like, why are you sure? You gave such a bad reasoning. We literally shot your reasoning Elaborate. down. Like 30, in 30 seconds, we literally shot I, down her reasoning. I example. think it's fine. Like, in, in Islam too, I think it's actually good if you marry outside of your ethnicity. Of course, same religion. But I feel like, I don't know. It's life. <laughs> oh my god. You know that song? Hashtag deep. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Lala philosopher. Shut up. It's life. No, I can't. It's life. I'm not gonna be like. Also, the choices that we have here. Oh my god, like, that what is what so heck? true. Our choices are so limited as we were So, girls. of course, I'm gonna say sure. Our choices are limited. Okay, but like, still, but we. I always tell Dupetti this not to expose you or whatever. <laughs> There's just. Introduce me to someone, guys. <laughs> There's just like. That's just here. Like, we have to keep in mind that there is, like, like you said, there's an entire world. Our other world. states, there's other countries, and, like, Lala's always talking about fob this, fob that. I don't want to fob. <laughs> but she is, a, she is a fob herself. That's I why you can't have two fobs in a relationship. It has to be one fob and one. Or just two people that are not fobs. Okay. I don't like, I'm the fob in the relationship, so I can't have another fob who doesn't know his way around here. Like, can we go out to a restaurant or something? Why are you or literally, like, racist? <laughs> Jeez, that's, that's not racist. racist. It's a How is that racist? Okay, I have a question for both of you. Am I going to get canceled for hate? You're not. She literally hates fobs. I don't hate fobs. I mean, yeah, I would prefer know. not to date I don't hate myself. Well. I am a fob. You she literally for will tenders. literally see, like, a normal, like, guy. And she'll be like, ew, he's a Guys, fob. are you ready for my question? This yes. better be a good question. Shh. Oh, you did <laughs> okay. So, in terms of Uyghur guys and dating, do you guys prefer? I mean, like from what you guys have experienced so um, far. I haven't experienced anything. I don't <laughs> date. You didn't even let me. Okay, let's say out. <laughs> what are okay. guys? I've never heard. <laughs> okay, even though you didn't experience whatever, do you guys think you would prefer like a Uyghur guy who grew up in Methan or grew up here? At this point, <laughs> whatever is available. <laughs> I mean, at this point, will we ever even meet a Uyghur guy? Because, like, let's say Hudayn Bursa, like, like, <laughs> inshallah, things stop. Like, like the like the crimes happening in, like, but then come to an end. But even at that point, like, I feel like that then is just so behind because it's been so oppressed for the past, like, almost 50 years over almost 100 years like, yeah. now um since th- like east turkestan was assimilated forcefully assimilated in 1949 it's been almost 100 years and mm-hmm. like it's just been so behind like technologically like in all these different ways like even if we were to meet an Uyghur guy, like, I think from that then like would our mindsets really be no the same? i mean like not like 
like a guy who grew up in Vietnam but then came here. You know what I mean? Oh, like, like that are already say, here right like, now. Yeah. Like, like kind of like you, so a fop. <laughs> kind of like Lala, but maybe a little bit older. Like they came here a little older than Lala. I mean, in that type of situation, uh, because there's still differences. So, which one would you guys do? You guys personally think would you, you prefer, prefer me? Because no, cause over I mean, I think, No, because I think Lala is very Americanized. Like, you answer the question. Who do you vibes. prefer? No, Likian. Show me Lala. Then, but that's wrong. That what Like Lala is pretty young. Let's say they came in like high school. Pretty young. But also no, she pretty came, old. I let's say they came here like when they were in high school um, or like college, maybe even college. Like when they're like think, young, but not. Young. I would prefer. I mean, since you guys directed the question at me, you go first. We'll, we'll go in a line. I think. <laughs> I <laughs> think. <laughs> what is happening? I think, I think I would prefer somebody who's grown up here, mm. just because like just like how we're assimilated to like. English and to American culture, like uh, they're gonna be assimilated to some degree to Chinese, Chinese, Chinese culture, culture and Chinese language and Chinese education system, and like I can't blame them for that just because that's the oppression that they've been going through and that's what they grew up in. Um, but that's something that I can never connect with, and I might even feel some sort of disdain for that. Like, just stop talking Chinese. Like, stop referring to things in Chinese. Stop like having the sense of Chinese culture in you. But mm-hmm. that's like almost the same with me. Like, I have American culture within me. I'm speaking English. I refer to things in English. Like, it's like the same but different. So I feel mm-hmm. like that kind of like, con- what is the word? Like that kind of disconnect mm-hmm. is something that I feel like I wouldn't be able to cope. with. What about you, Lala? I think I already gave my answer. What was oh. oh, she hates freaking fobs. I don't hate fobs. She I don't know what fobs she are. She literally can what is tell. A fob? She literally like, gets a vibe from a fob from their Instagram. She'll look at their Instagram. She'll be like, "Ew, they look like a fob." Both of you are literally this. Okay, I'll get into that uh, soon. Me? But like for me, it's fifty fifty because I've. Nurbel is like the most Uyghur out of. Us, I feel like at times, oh. the way she speaks Urgoja and stuff like that, to me, it gives off like as if she grew up there and came here. That's what everyone but tells I, me. That's, I feel like because you have your grandparents here too, which is I, so nice. Um, But I was, as I was saying, for me, I feel like I'm okay with a guy. She was trying Sorry. to get it on. She was trying to get the conversation on and you interrupted her. <laughs> Sorry. You go on the <laughs> thing. She ignored you. She was like, anyways. No, she was <laughs> No, I said, I That's told her. I Okay. Um, I personally have, well, I don't have anything against like a certain one. I like both, to be honest. So it just depends <laughs> on the guy, you know? She Cause, likes both. Because I feel like I could, <laughs> I could be with, all. <laughs> no, I could be with someone that grew up there and I could also be with someone that grew up here. At the end of the day, it's just how they are as a person. She's going to have a little taste of both. But both, but these two literally, <laughs> they'll look at a guy's like Instagram no, for the first time, and talking. then they'll just make a judgment based off of that. That's I'm like true. me. I give I him a chance. An I give him a chance. What is that? Okay, but guys, true. Instagram pictures though. Yeah. Okay. Like that's not true. What she's saying is not true. But, but I will say, if you look ugly in a picture, don't post it. And that's the team. <laughs> Like, but they don't know. <laughs> That's why you need no, to help them. What if ugly to me is different to you? So Girl, we agree. Hey, I said, I was trying to like... She was trying to scope out guys for herself. Not for me, me for tell, you. For me? Let's no, this don't let her say it. I. There was a guy that she was kind of interested in. And the guy... Don't talk about it. No, let me... Gonna let's know. still see. <laughs> There was a guy that Nubedi was kind of interested in. Um, and you know what? He was like pretty qualified in my opinion. Um, in most ways. Keep talking. So I don't want them to hear this. <laughs> and so she sent me a profile of his friend. Oh, and she was like, uh, you request him so I can stalk him from his page. <laughs> from his friend's page. No way! <laughs> and so me, being the gracious, amazing, beautiful, gorgeous, but gorgeous. Beautiful and gorgeous <laughs> friend that I am, I was like, sure, no, Betty, I will do you a solid, and I will request wait. Let him. me finish. No, I will request him for you, let so you can stop. Anything. You can this stalk is, your friend is, through your little friend through his friend's page, and so, Lala, can you follow? I follow. 
<laughs> I followed. He accepted. He followed back. And then I take a little look-see at this man's profile. And let me tell you, it was not a sec to see. And she was trying to convince me that he was some hotshot or whatever. And I was like, okay. It was giving fob vibes. <laughs> okay. yes. yes, that's what she said. Wait, listen to me. Okay, I didn't tell Zalala Let's make this. this clear. I am a fob. If anyone comes... For me, but she I also am hates fobs. fobs. <laughs> okay, well, I hate my own. Kind. Let me explain for my. Okay, I didn't tell Zalala this. Wait, actually, Zalala kind of knows this, but I didn't say it to her. I have this weird like. It's not okay. Maybe dream is like too big of a word to use for this. Dream, dream as in like future or like dream. No, like like <laughs> something that I want to happen in the future. But I've why, always. Why would it be a sleeping dream? A bitch believes in dreams telling the future. I. I I believe, believe in it. I believe in that too. You're just shut up. I don't think. Okay. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to believe in those things. No, in Islam. Islam. In Islam, it says like there are three types of dreams. Girl, don't make that one face. Is, one is affected by real life. The other one is like bisharat dirish or bisharat, whatever the word is, like future. You see the future, and then the other one is for fact, But like there are three types of dreams. Okay. Anyways, as I was saying, I've always. <laughs> this is kind of weird. That I'm saying this on a podcast and I never wait actually I told you this but I've always wanted like it's just been like a little fantasy of my, for <laughs> not me to say <laughs> bolded the main ah, Nurpeti has always wanted uh, like my good friends to date my significant other's friends so we can go on double date so this whole time she's been trying to <laughs> indoctrinate me double date brainwash me into Finding guys that are her guys, her guys' is friends, <laughs> no. so that we can go on those double dates to fulfill, fulfill no. her little weird fantasy. No, show. what if you uh, like the guy that I introduced you to? I was that fake. I would be a good iPod. No, you were fake. Was, but like, what if? No, obviously I would have forced you to date the guy. But what if you guys click? <laughs> she she is forcing you to do it. me. What she if you like, click? Follow him. Request him. She was literally texting his friend, texting to remind me. Okay, no, <laughs> guys, he looks better in person. No, he doesn't. I you saw guys his know Instagram how guys picture. are. They don't look good on Instagram. But then when you see, him, and he's tall, and that needs where, to be addressed. Where can you find a tall Uyghur man these days? All of them are short as fuck. Oh. <laughs> I did you. And this is what needs to be addressed. That people are short. No, I need mean a tall guy. Like I don't no, need a tall guy. No, is that so hard to ask? What needs to be addressed? Feet? No, good. Sorry. <laughs> what needs? <laughs> what needs to be addressed is guys' Instagrams. Oh, and we their, were, and we, their height. We were guys' Instagrams. Why are they all so bad? It's so bad. Like if I like you, uh, like she said, like you look so much better in person. Like. What if people say that about us? No, me? literally, like, all these guys, like, you see them in person, they're so, like, they have potential, but then, like, if you see their Instagrams, you're like, bro, no way this is it. That's what I'm telling you about the guy. Like, he looks bad on Instagram. He's tall. Like, our parents' generation compared to this generation, like, I wish we could experience love the way our parents did. Um. Sorry. <laughs> Damn. That's no. some trauma <laughs> to unpack right no, there. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm at like <clears throat> Zalala's parents' love story, bro. That that's why, I, like, I don't know. That's how I keep my standards up, <laughs> like for real. My well, parents. I'll have to invite my mom sometime to tell to spill the so tea. She can tell her, tell mm. her a little side of the story. Nobody, why don't we talk about your experiences then? Mm. I think, like, I mean. I want to talk about my experience, but I think I haven't experienced it the same way that you guys have. Like, mm. I think I'm grateful that, like, my experiences were, like, for the most part, like, positive. So. <clears throat> well, well, mine wasn't negative. I'm not saying yours was negative, but I think, like, there was aspects of it that I wouldn't have been able to experience because you're, like, the guys that you've talked to are just, like, older. I, I feel to like, older to too. me, it's a norm, so I just, like, go with And it. that's a problem for both of you. I feel like that's they get butt hurt easily. I think that's just everybody. I don't know. You can never understand what they're thinking either. There was this one guy that I talked to, and we honestly, Who? like, I'm not going to say I'll just bleep it out. I'm not oh, talk about ew! That. So basically, Boo! we tomato, to, we tomato. To, we met, and 
honestly, like, I thought he was a chill guy, and, like, our personalities clicked, and then we were just, like, talking on and off, and, like, he was really trying to hang out with me all the time, whatever, and then, obviously, I wasn't really comfortable with that, because, I don't know, I was still in my healing phase, or whatever, and, like, I don't know, I just don't really feel comfortable hanging out with a guy alone, unless we've been friends for a while, and, like, hung out in a group setting more, um, but then, long story short, he would, like, always not really come up to me in person, like, in public spaces. It was kind of like he was trying to keep things low-key or hang out one-on-one. And then, in the end, it turns out he was talking to someone else the whole time. And he was kind of, he started getting dramatic. He was like, were you saying this, were you saying that? And I was like, no, bro, like, I didn't. But can I add something? Would you guys, like, define it and say, like while we're talking we're not supposed to talk to anyone else because in my head it's like if you're just talking you can no talk to he can't talk but to the, other the girls but the girl was her. talking bad about me though um, she was saying that i was trying to steal her mans or whatever and he, they were calling her a home runner. after he got after he got butt hurt like because i kind of just stopped talking to him because i was pissed off when he said that i was saying stuff because he seemed like to be getting dramatic and I think that's when he got butt hurt and then he said like something that was completely the opposite of what happened to the girl. And honestly, I always thought he was a chill guy. Like he's chill with my family and stuff. I just didn't expect that to come from him, regardless on how we ended things. I would just like to add one thing that every single guy that I have not approved of that these two have talked to has turned out to be horrible. So maybe next time they need to listen to my advice because it seems like it always turns out right. Oh, I'm just trying to think. <laughs> I love the way she thinks. She goes like, her eyes are um, like, What is she talking about? Funny. Who is she talking about for you? No, Do you want me to pull her names? Because I, I can't. I've never <laughs> talked to anyone in my life. <laughs> um, oh, that's a big fat lie. I don't know about that. Even I know that's not true. <laughs> that's a big fat lie. All I know is like, my next relationship has to be approved by Zalala. Period. Next that's one, it. I just won't tell you. <laughs> Girl, you know that's a lie. The littlest thing happens, she says, Zalala, what do I say? What do I say? Tell me right now. Oh my gosh. Zalala, what lie? Where are you? FaceTime call, FaceTime call, FaceTime call. All but right. if nothing, but if if she doesn't need me, zero. Never reaches out. Never text me. When I go to college, that's a gone. Lie. Literally gone. Where is she? Who knows? Down the rabbit hole. Shklip. <laughs> All I know is Uyghur guys' egos, and once they get butt hurt, like, oh, bro, literally, guys, most of the time, like, after things end between you and them, or if they get butt hurt, they should talk. The girl. But, like, I just feel like the majority of the time, if a relationship between a guy and a girl doesn't go well in the Uyghur community, then it's the girl's fault. Like, no one really blames it on the guy. They're like, oh, the girl was probably lacking this, the girl was probably lacking that. And if the guy gets butt hurt, I feel like he doesn't really care about protecting the girl's reputation. Like, he'll just go and say stuff just so his ego can it's be because, boosted. It's because girls' reputations are so fragile. Like, the littlest thing can give you such a bad name in the legal community. Yeah. And I think it's, like, pretty well known. Like, we can say shit about guys. Literally, it's like you're hitting a, like, a metal wall. Like, nothing... Mm-hmm. Nothing really breaks their reputation because, you know, they're guys, so it's whatever. Like, they're supposed to explore, they're supposed to do things long, wrong and learn from it. But for girls, it's, like, so different. Mm-hmm. I don't know, I just feel like after breakups, both parties should still respect each other. Can we get over? After this? Yeah. Okay. And that's a wrap for our very first episode of Chit Chat and Chai. We chit-chatted, we had some chai, um, and... I think it went well. Thank you for I coming. I felt like I was just watching in the back. Um, I felt like a viewer <laughs> instead of a guest. So I think and whose fault is that? No, no, no. Literally I think that's fine. That? So in-